When pilots act like flight attendants. Hank, oh my god. Kroofy. This is mean, but it's pretty realistic. Lately, I've been commenting a lot more on Instagram, and since then, people have started sending me aviation memes. So I thought, why not share them with the 7-4 crew? So, aviation memes. Coming up. Hey 74 crew, welcome back. If you don't know me, my name's Kelsey. I'm a 747 pilot. My channel 74 Gear is all about aviation. Today I'm in Dallas, Texas, as you probably noticed from the intro. This is the view here from the hotel. A lot of people have been asking for some more footage of where I'm at in the world, so I thought I'd start sharing them with you. Anyways, let's get into the aviation memes. Rough landing, but did you die? Okay. So I've had people come up to me and they say, oh, that was the greatest landing ever. And me and the other pilot look at each other like, really? Because that one was kind of bad. But at the end of the day, if you've arrived safely, even if it was a hard landing, hey, we're not all perfect. Voila, madam. Your hotel room, the view, it leaves you speechless. Nope. <laughs> yeah, so this is sometimes the case. You might get to the coolest hotel and you'll have a really short overnight and you have this amazing view and you want to do everything in the city and then you might have a very long overnight in a place that you're like, eh, this is not really the place I want to be. But this is really true as a crew member. A lot of times when you finish your long trip, if you get there, especially if you didn't sleep well during your rest period and you get to the hotel and you're like, oh man, I just really wish I had the energy to go out and enjoy this city. But you signed to be a crew member, so this is part of it. 9.5 hour layover, 30 hour layover. Yes, this is, exa this is actually just what I was talking about. I've had hotel rooms that are so awesome and you get there and you think, why do I only have 11 hours here? Or the city that you wanna be in that's really awesome. If you're a crew member, you know this is always how it works out. You have the long layovers in the places that you generally don't wanna be and it's usually a crappy hotel room. Waiting on that VFR pilot to finish their request. Okay, <laughs> that's just mean. So a VFR pilot, if you're, if you're not a pilot, a VFR pilot is generally a person who is not a professional pilot. They're flying in day weathered or they're flying in normal everyday conditions basically. And obviously most of the times those are newer pilots so they're a little slower on the radio and don't speak that concisely. So basically what they're saying here is airline pilots are listening to these guys make radio calls and we're just so frustrated. And when I was a new pilot, I always thought airline pilots are listening to me going, dude, hurry up. Anyway, for the most part, airline pilots know that we were there too, so don't worry about it. Make the radio call that you need to make. And if you can do things to improve, I got a bunch of videos talking about how to make radio communications. Premature evacuation. <laughs> All right, so I actually saw this happen. I was doing a walk around years ago in Toronto and two flight attendants blew a slide as I was doing my walk around. You just see the slide shooting out of the door and I looked over and I could see on their face, they both were just staring out like, oh no, and all I could, I just felt bad for them. It happens actually more often than you think. I've only seen it happen one time. It's gotta be very embarrassing for the crew members that are up there. They do a whole cross check and things like that, but premature evacuation, it, it happened, right? I mean. It happens to the best of us. Me trying to explain my work schedule to friends. Yeah. <laughs> this or it actually would be better if it said me trying to explain how to bid to a new crew member because it is so complex and so diverse of, okay, if you want this, you need this. And there's all these different types of bidding systems, but this is so true. If you're explaining how to bid for someone, I think that would be a better explanation for this. Trying to explain how to bid to a new person and I used to do that, especially when I was at the regionals, new flight attendants would come and I would tell them, hey, this is what you need to bid. And a lot of times I would just take their phone and I would just start bidding for them. What do you want? Okay, this is how you're gonna bid this. And I would kind of teach them as I go. But this is really true. Feeling lonely? Squawk 7500. So there's a code that we put into the aircraft before we take off and that helps air traffic control to be able to track our plane. But this isn't something you'd really want to do if you were feeling lonely, obviously. But it is a code that you'd send out and that would get a lot of people calling you on the radio right away. And you'd get some fighter jets there before you knew it. And they'd be flying along looking and trying to talk to you and communicate with you. So that's what Squawk 7500 means. I only date bad boys. <laughs> so basically what they're saying is 
you're basically breaking the rules. So it's the max speed that the aircraft can go. You can see it by that red line at 160 knots and he's doing uh, 165 or maybe this is miles per hour because, oh no, it's knots, yeah. So he's supposed to be doing at the max 160 knots and he's going past that. Uh, I don't know anybody that's flying a Cessna that fast. A lot of these engines on these smaller aircraft now don't have the same power that they once had when they first made them. But if you want a bad boy, then you want this guy. When ATC says stand by for full route clearance. <laughs> yes, so a full route clearance is basically like when you file a flight plan and you're saying you're going from LA to Miami, they put you on a bunch of different routes all the way there, different roads in the sky, if you will. And that is something that the airline will file for us. What this is basically saying is air traffic control, ATC, is basically giving you a whole new route, which means you have to write it down by hand and then reload it into your computer. And it's super annoying. Now my next question is, why did this guy put headphones on a baby and then the baby's crying and he's still leaving them on there? But how I feel after a perfect landing. Yes, even today, every time I think of pilot, no matter if you're brand new or you have five or 7,000 hours, it's always gonna be the case. I think no matter how long you're gonna be flying because we all know that's what we're judged on. So after a perfect landing, I always feel like this. Female crew visiting cockpit, male crew visiting cockpit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is probably true. A lot of times when we're up there, especially again when I was flying passengers a lot more, we'd have jump seaters, people that are just catching a ride. And you would hear a female's voice and both, both pilots, especially if you have another guy, we would both turn around. If you hear a guy's voice as he's coming up like, hey guys, everyone's like, oh yeah, hey, what's up man? It's, uh, I don't know, we're dudes, we're stuck in a box, I, I don't know what to tell you, but uh, this is pretty true. Sleeps with a pilot, finds out he was only the first officer. <laughs> This is just mean, okay? We all have to start somewhere. So first officer, you got three bars. A captain, you have four bars. Obviously, if you're a first officer, you're getting paid a lot less than a captain. So they're just making fun of us and that's not nice because we're people too. In every hotel room, there is always a light you don't know how to turn off. Yes, this is so true. This actually happened in this hotel room when I got in here. This is kind of a strange layout of a hotel room. And last night I got in kind of late. I grabbed some food and doing some work on actually YouTube, replying to some comments and things like that, and doing some Instagram because that's what I do with my life at night. Uh, but there was a light over by the bathroom, which you can't see, which is all the way over there. And I could not get it to turn out. And I was walking around and I was trying to hit all these different buttons to get it to turn out. And I could not get it to turn off. And it is so frustrating, especially when you're tired and ready to go to bed. But I eventually hit the button in the right way to get it to turn out. But sometimes there's these but these lights and you can't find it and there's this like computer switch on the other side of the room, especially in Asia a lot. And at nighttime, you just want to turn the lights off and go to sleep. It's, it's so true. Every now and again, there's a hotel room and there's a light over here that I could not get to turn on. I, I don't know. So these hotel rooms, you just never know. When you land at base and crew scheduling tries to call you, I don't know if you've ever seen this movie, it's actually really funny, but basically what this means is some in some places when you land in your base, crew scheduling, and you're finishing your trip, crew scheduling can call you and try to send you back out or extend your trip. That's not the case in every airline, it's just different rules, but in a lot of cases if you get back to base and they try to send you back out, you're running away from them trying to avoid getting sent back out because you just want to go home and finish your trip. But this is true, I know people who they would have a person from crew scheduling that had to physically contact you and they would wait outside your gate. I know a pilot who would, in the bathroom of this of our regional jet, change his uniform shirt and then walk out like he was a passenger and then just pretend to be on his phone or something like that so the scheduler weren't really sure and then he would try to get away and they only had like 10 minutes to get you or something. So after 10 minutes it was too late and then you could go home. What really happens during takeoff? <laughs> Now, if you're a pilot, you know this isn't the case, but I imagine if you're a passenger in the back, you must be wondering sometimes what we're doing up there. Uh, I can assure you we're not both having our hands up in the air and uh, screaming. I promise. I promise. <laughs> Great, now let's do this one more time. Really draw it out. Uh, pilot PA training. Now, if you're enjoying this and you're laughing and having a good time, I actually talked about this in particular with another video that I was doing with a flight attendant. And I'm gonna put it right up here. 
we're basically talking about why pilots do this, where we go, uh, between when we're trying to say things, and I explain what I think it was, and she's making fun of me, so go check it out. All right, 7-4 crew, thanks so much for sending me these memes on Instagram. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, keep the blue side up.